Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video on the little 2018 Volkswagen Polo. Guys, this one is actually a nice one. I'm recorded this car, so we it was picked up from quite far away. The front wheel was knocked off it. And for those of you that missed it, I actually put a little insert in the last video. Flick that key, Chris. I fitted the inlet manifold to it, that arrived. And it is now on the button, which is lovely. Really, really nice car. We've got a few bits for this, so we can crack on with it. The main damage on this one is the end of that cap, which is a two-minute job for Chris. He'll probably put a towing eye in there and pull that straight up and get that bang on. The actual worst of the damage on this car is where this wheel was knocked off. It actually went back and clumped the seal there, and you can see... It has folded it in quite far. So in order to start doing this one, that is going to be one of the main parts that we're going to need to actually sort out. For Chris to get in there, get involved, see if I need to go and sort us a new bit of seal, which is highly likely. And really, see if we do need anything else. The worst way, get a parts car around here, etc, etc. Start getting the curtain airbag stripped out, the seat, get that all stripped. Start getting some progress done on this car. We don't want it sat around. Eddie actually uh, hooked us up with this wheel and it had a few curbs in it. And when he watched the video, he actually said, you know what, Rob, another one's turned up. He's got the matching tire to what's on this car. It's like new and the wheel hasn't got, well, it's got a couple of tiny little marks on it. So we're gonna be swapping that wheel over as well, getting that on there. So you ready, mate? Get it inside. Don't forget it's got no brakes. You have to use your handbrake. We haven't bled it up since we put that leg on, so let's get it inside. Of course, nothing set in stone, but you can see Chris has sort of marked the area where he thinks that we're going to need to cut it. You you could beat that straight, Chris. It'd be, it'd be pointless, wouldn't it? That's a lot of work there to get that straight. No, never make it perfect. Never make it perfect, no. But you, you see, he had the whippy wheel out there, and that's from Worth, guys. I know quite a lot of you do ask before. Um, and you get the whippy wheels on the end of it from Worth as well, Worth Tools. You can see the spot weld there, and... Chris said there's obviously a few more behind here, so you've got a bit of the wheel arch line of caught in there. This is actually quite tinny, this part, so we'll probably just pull that out, find the spot welds, remove that section, and then obviously cut it through here and have a nice join in it and get the bodywork done. But yeah, it's, it's all part of it, and until it was cleaned up, Chris couldn't see if this... Because quite a lot of cars, believe it or not, especially on quarter panels somewhere like through here there would be a natural join already and we was just looking to see if there was any kind of join here i'm zoomed in quite far exactly. uh, I was looking that, that way, Rob. They're joined that way some of them as well yeah, underneath yeah always go down what? to the pinch world they have a secondary joint along what, there what car was that we done recently where you're right it it, it literally like a cover wasn't yeah. it yeah i can't remember so many like but there was a car quite yeah. recently that we did that on but I'm going to head down to Kent Auto Salvage and see what he's got there because I'm going to need to lob a bit off of one. But worst way, we can bring a parts car back nice. here. It be would, nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, then you can choose where you're going to cut it. I know that the only late, late polo that he's got down there at the moment is a black one, but it's a GTI. It's going to be no different, is it? Oh, that'd be all the same. And I shouldn't even think on a two-door and a four-door oh, that's going to be... That be the same wouldn't it so i'll head around there see what he's got i've got to get some other bits anyway and you're going to crack on just keep yeah. cleaning that up yeah. looking for the spot welds right let's do there's it there's always a little something that pops up so chris is actually in there now and he's while i'm out he's going to remove the curtain airbag because we need to get a new airbag put in the driver's seat and also have the seat repaired at leader trimmers but it, I've actually just remembered the Mini, when we was doing the 2020 Mini, we did notice that the brake discs were getting quite quite low on them. They've got a limit and they are near that limit. So I'm actually just gonna pop round, 
grab four new discs for it and possibly some pads. I think Chris said the pads are like brand new in it. They've just been done, but it does need discs. So I'm going to whip around and get some discs while he cracks on and gets that done. So that's the seat airbag removed, ready to go off to airbag team. Just before I remove the last one of these hog rings, I don't know if you can see that. I just wanted to sort of show what how these are held on. I don't know if you can see really. There's a, a wire structure formed inside that foam, and these at various points hook on and that's what keeps the seat taut or the seat covering taut they're quite fiddly there's the last one and what you've got to do is get in there with a screwdriver and open them up slightly and then spin them round so that they uh, they come off a bit like putting keys on a key ring really but I just wanted to kind of show that um, they're not too bad to get off they're more fiddly to put back together because you've got to get them on there and get them nice and tight so that they're not going to pop off but um, that's it really and then the, the seat covering can go off to Lee the trimmer and be refurbished and the airbag can go to airbag team do you know what guys I actually been running around actually doing a, a bit of video in for another video and this is the parts car I went to Kent Auto Salvage and got. It's actually a five-door GTI. Such a lovely car this was. And bits like this, I did say to him, why they never ended up on eBay, I'll never know, because it they are lovely. And this is like a 67, I think, or oh, the back bumper was there. I think it might even be a 68 plate. That interior would have been lovely, but he sold the passenger seat. And the driver's one, you can see... That would have repaired really nicely, but hey ho, it is what it is. All we wanted was that front edge there, and unfortunately I wasn't here. Chris has chopped that out. He's just in there now, playing around with it, and then I suppose I'll definitely be there when it comes to him fitting that on the new car, on the on the other car, getting that all lined up and getting that right. So just thought I'd show you, because I completely forgot to actually show any of it. Let's uh, quickly show you this car. boot lids in good condition someone's had the old gti badge off it but it is all round i remember when he got this one in unfortunately yeah again the airbag set's gone off and it's had quite a wallop in the front there as well pretty much like ours right let's get to it I know we never question the master anyway, do we guys? But look at the state of that. That is the piece that Chris has cut off the end of the seal there. And it is proper munched. There is the one he's cut off of the parts car. It hasn't had its final cut here yet. Hasn't had a cut here. And he's actually outside because once he did cut that off, he noticed that there was a bit of damage on this little piece here. It was quite punched in and the spotter wouldn't pull it out. So he's actually cutting that off the other car. And then there is like a, a finishing panel that actually closes off the end of this section. And you can see where it glues in and it's got two plug welds on it there. So we'll let him get both of those bits off. Just clip that all the way back on like that. So it's gonna go something like that and be absolutely perfect. I mean, there's going to be a little join through here and a join through here somewhere, but you're never going to tell, are you, once he's completely finished it. And that is, that's going to save that, isn't it? 
we'll let him continue on, get that bit welded in there. And then I suppose he'll probably crack straight on with the bodywork on that because that is the only piece of bodywork at the moment. And of course, straightening out that. Right, let's let him carry on. So for any of you that have actually ever been in a workshop while there's welding going on, you will know exactly why I am out in my van now. So it's quite smoky, quite smelly, and also I can't sit there and watch Chris do it because you need to have a mask on. You can't watch welding while you're sitting in the same room. Although someone did leave a comment in the last video saying um, I should have been wearing, they should have been wearing a welding mask while I was watching it on. I'm not sure that's a thing, but I am going to pop out and just grab us a coffee. He's welding in that little in piece there. You can see the inner structure. He's got to weld that back in first, clean that up, get some primer on it, and then move on to the next bit. So I'm going to shoot out, get us a coffee, and hopefully he gets that done by the time I get back. If not, I'm just going to stick around outside till Chris shouts me. Recording here, Chris is showing me his latest bronze <laughs> nutcracker purchase, yeah, all the way down from Cornwall, guys. Oh, uh, do you know what? It's, it's probably not the most exciting in the world to watch that, but that's unbelievable how different that looks already. You've welded in that. Is the old bit still here, I've already shown that, Chris, oh, yeah. previously in the video, but yeah, let's even just lean it up there. You can see how far back. I mean, how far back? Yeah. But then that end piece is just a piece of tin, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it floats, doesn't it? So Chris has got to continuously weld this all the way on and then a couple of plug welds here. But that inner structure's in there and also that there is that like, strengthening plate. Well, it's like a closing panel. Closing panel, sorry. Yeah. So if I can get just around there. It closes off the gap. Yeah, you can see that's the other side of those two plug welds. And then I was saying earlier on in this video apart from i did just notice that yeah, little mark yeah, there that's that's actually out. supposed to be there i think just wants re-seam sealing um there's not actually fingers crossed i'm saying this with my fingers crossed any body work for you no just there's a little bit on this yeah which is pretty straightforward although i did look the other side and this has a slight concave yeah all the way till about here somewhere. And it, Actually, I can see that now. See the concrete? I don't yeah. know if from the angle whether you'd show it better. If it, if so it you can it. see it dips in now, and what Chris is saying, when it gets here... It, it actually goes very slightly the other way. Yeah. So, it, so unfortunately, it's right under... Do you know what, towards. do you know what, Chris? Saying that, like that there. Do you remember, it was the Passat. first, the Passat, it was yeah, the first yeah. one you ever done, you went... The rear oh. quarters are the same, if you ever look at that quarter. I remember you saying, though, that's not something that that's you'd seen tricky. on a car. Yeah, quite yeah. tricky, I had to do that on the uh, the other side, on the white Passat, didn't I? You did, yeah, on the quarter panel, yeah. But unbelievable how quick this one is coming along now. Now, the, 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 oh, I, I would like to say, Chris might kick me for saying it, that was the hardest part of the repair on this car. Well, it is really the only bit, isn't it? Yeah. Really, I mean, that's, that's tiny on the front there, isn't it? Can we video uh, so many people? I know a lot of people have already seen it, Chris, and I know I'm moving around a lot, probably driving everyone crazy today, but when you get the slide hammer out, quite often it is on time-lapse. I think we've only ever shown it once. Is it, are you going to be using the slide hammer on that? It's probably a bit too strong. A little bit too strong, yeah. so we'll have to give that a little, little bit more of a pull, but... It'd take 
five minutes to put the bows around it. If you can remind me, next time we are using the slide hammer. Some people just wanted to see sort of what it does do and how it does work. So yeah. we'll let you carry on, mate, and get that all welded back in. So after all that, we quickly got the car down and Chris went, Rob, we'll show it. We've got the dozer here, let's do it. I've got the air on. Yeah, it's just building up, I think. So, towing hook. Did we put a nut on it? I didn't put a nut on the back of it, is that right? That is all I wanted to show, but it's, it's now back to square again. So Chris will... Warning, loud banging. No, or, or, already happened. So what Chris done there, straightened it up and then hit where it actually bent. And then once he releases it, it don't go all the way back where it was. Pretty much bang on there, mate. We'll let you finish off your little bit of fettling that you're gonna do. Well, it's been quite a while. Let's see how he's getting on with that welding. Hey, getting on, mate? Yeah, nearly done. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, everyone, Scott from Ratarossa has popped down to see us today. Really, really for, like for, tricky stuff. Tricky stuff. Thought he'd come down and give us a hand. He turned up. This was not fixed. Scott, if you can just turn around, just so we can see the back here. He is wearing the blue jumper, the jeans, and the boots. And it, it just so happened Chris was wearing blue jeans and a blue top in this video. So we call each other every morning just to make sure. <laughs> Definitely not. So lovely to see Scott, and really nice to have you in a video, mate. Wait, We've been... I, I've been promising to come down here for, for what, three years? It, three years? It is three years. Yeah. So for those of you guys that don't know Scott, when the early days, when I first got the Ferrari that was parked over here, I started nagging the life out of some yeah. poor YouTuber <laughs> yeah. who kindly took his car poor to... Is the world, yeah. yeah. Is the world. Took his car to pieces to help us. Yeah. Sending us diagrams, etc., etc., and you've come down to stand that beautiful challenge car. We should check it out. Mate. It's, it's, the, it's the same kind of car as the one that you. It is that it. that beautiful challenge car that he's rebuilt. Let's go out there and take a quick look at that. I don't know how many of you guys actually see Scott do this, but this this was incredible. Really, what he done. He got a 360 Spider, which they don't make a challenge car, and it was actually a job for someone who wanted to convert that car origi originally to a challenge car. And Scott, somehow you've ended up with what's left of it. So this was the donor car. Um, it doesn't make sense at all, but we stripped this car with all the carbon goodies, carbon brake system, suspension, interior, engine, the whole lot. It all went on the Spider. So we created this world's only challenge for Dolly Spider. Uh, and part of the deal was I bought back the, what I call the Frankenstein car. So it was the shell and all the stuff that came off the Spider. So it was a running driving car, but for me, it had to be the Stradale again. So I spent two years finding the parts from all over the world, buying them, and we just finished putting it back together. It's back as a Stradale again, and it sounds very nice. It does it's sound very nice. Now, I'm a fan anyway, you know I'm a fan, but there's a particular story. We, we very rarely get time to watch videos. I know you watch the odd one of ours and I do watch the odd one of yours. On and I watch all of yours every night before I go to bed. Yeah? Okay, <laughs> after you've called Chris. I know, I know that one of these seats was actually a gaming chair in America. Yeah, yeah. And you went out there and actually put these in a suitcase. It wasn't in a suitcase. I couldn't get a suitcase big enough. So I split the seat in two and um, we tried to get it in a suitcase realized that it wasn't going to work so I actually ordered a nine foot Christmas tree bag <laughs> we packed it in a Christmas tree bag wrapped it all up and I took it as extra hand luggage on the plane <laughs> how much did you save yeah. there on shipping because I ordered a seat belt for yeah. my 355 I paid for it yeah. it was 105 pound yeah. lot of money back then and when it arrived, the postman knocked on the door and wanted another 37 yeah, quid. Yeah. So it cost me $99 for an extra case. Uh, a 
wanted to ship that because of the size of it and you know just like if you look at the back bit here it's a big box with all the packaging uh, and that's what you pay on is not the weight because they're actually quite light yeah but it's the dimensions of the box so say about a grand <laughs> unbelievable it. would you mind popping your engine cover I know, I know a lot of our audience that are watching, they're not really into revving cars up, but like listening to it. But Scott revved this up for us a moment ago. Well, blew us away. That's, I can't believe this. It actually sounds like a Formula One car. It, it, it's pretty crazy. When these exhaust valves down here, they open up about three, three and a half thousand RPM. It just is a game changer. <laughs> like you need earmuffs. You told me about unplugging mine on my black one, so I did. Yeah, it yeah, did yeah. sound a lot yeah. better, but this really has, this is incredible, this car. It really is something yeah. else, it, isn't uh, it? The hardest part of this really was finding all of the bits, uh, which they are just so rare now. Um, Ferrari don't make half of these anymore, and so I literally have travelled around the world picking bits up. Yeah, you haven't just found the bits around the world, you've travelled oh, around really, the world. Yeah, um, they're just... You don't want to risk shipping things um, and obviously doing a deal, you want to make sure you're not going to get mugged off, right? Yeah. So you kind of take the money and you, you do it um, and do the you, handshake. You did ask me to come to Prague with you, but Chris, yeah. Chris wouldn't give me the time off. <laughs> no, we've just been so busy, I couldn't yeah. come, but, but yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, we did Prague, we did Frankfurt for mirrors. Like I said, uh, the seats came from across the pond. Um, but yeah, bits Australia. We've ordered stuff. I didn't go to Australia, unfortunately. But uh, no, nah. yeah. well, yeah. you've made a fantastic job of it, mate. It looks beautiful. Much, and I said to you on every video I watch on it, it yeah. always looks blue to me. But it is it definitely is a silver car. Definitely silver. Have you worked out your man hours? This would be interesting. It's a tricky one because obviously with what we do. Um, YouTube kind of absorbs that yeah. and and it's different as well because it takes three times as long to put this together when you're trying to film it exactly yeah we know we so, know so um, the man hours actually rebuilding this were not a lot the man hours it went into building the spider well it took me at least ten months to build that ten so months it was it, a lot of man hours it um, just shows this, you this was an absolute doddle in comparison because it, it was like literally rebolting bits back on. Yeah. We didn't have to rewire all this, so it was a nice, and easy build. videos of the spider on your channel. Yeah, the like full to, spider. Um, like we did it. something very, very special. We tried to do it as if Ferrari would have done it at the factory, so we rewired the whole car so it, it, it worked exactly the same as this car does. Um, and there's so many little things that you don't realise um, that Ferrari changed with those cars that you know we, we implemented into the Spider Bill. So. I think you know more than them, mate. Sometimes, no, don't well, you? Funny enough, they do call me for certain. I things. know you <laughs> did say that. I've uh, I bought my car to work today because Claire's using my van. She's actually loading it for a boot fair. When Scott pulled in, I said, I can't believe how wide that car looks. Even though I've had one, I don't remember it being that wide. I think having a soft top really does take a lot away from the look of the size of a car. Yeah, you really only can have those when you're a hairdresser. That's not nice, is it? <laughs> so I've got my car here today, and they actually do both look. You're, you're used to this, and yeah. everyone always says, Rob, how are you getting on with this car, etc., etc." Yeah. I love this car. It's I'm not, I'm not going to slag it off, but there is one thing I will say about this car. You're used to it, you love it, you've drove your black car for years. Yeah. It's got the carbon buckets. After an hour, they pay hell on me. No, I'll tell you something. Actually, uh, there's a big, big difference. The Lamborghini seats are notoriously bad. They're not comfortable. Yeah. Those are amazing. I have driven to Le Mans and back for 12 hours in those seats. They are really, really good. Jump in now. These, uh, the worst ones actually, are in a... Lamborghini Mercilago SV, right? right? You can do about half an hour and you will nearly need back surgery after that. I'm a, I'm a sloucher. You, have you got adjustment on these? No, so, yeah, they that's don't the move. That's the they go backwards and forwards, yeah. but I'm a sloucher yeah. and you cannot slouch yeah. in this car. Yeah, you're very upright. In yeah. this. I can feel the arch of my back right in that seat. But I'm only five foot seven anyway, so yeah. I've got the chair as far forward as it'll go. <laughs> <laughs> and that's lovely though. Really, really nice this. Yeah. 
I like it. I really don't. And that's, that, is, nice that is my only complaint. A couple of people said, oh, we're going to do this gumball to Italy. Do you want to come? I said, I'll come if I can borrow someone's seat yeah. to stick in there. Cause well, wouldn't it be funny if we stuck some Ferrari seats in this? Yeah. <laughs> From Fra I think we'd upset a few people, mate. Right, we're going to we're gonna take Scott in and have a cup of coffee because he's had a long drive down oh, here. Unfortunately, guys, Scott was in a bit of an hurry there and he never actually got the finish before he left, Chris. All jokes aside... Chris has got a bit more welding there and a bit more grinding up to do, but we're really, really happy with how far we got with the car. We got a little bit sidetracked there, but it was nice, wasn't yeah. it? For us, genuinely, yeah. he's such a lovely guy, yeah. Scott, yeah. and he, yeah. and he, and Chris has never actually met him. No, I've spoken to him on the phone, but that's it. Yeah, and I've been up there a couple of times to see him. So that is going to be the end of today's video, guys. As usual, we do hope that you did enjoy it. This one is ready now to start panelling up and me to crack on with our airbag kit. We've got all the bits packed up for it there, ready to go off to airbag team, and we're awaiting the rest of the parts to arrive. Don't forget, please like, subscribe and share. Anything to add, Chris? No, I think that's it. Have a good weekend. Have a good weekend, everyone, and we'll see you on Monday in the next one.